Well, I was born and raised in a non-Christian home, and my parents, they didn't go to church that much. They only went two times a year, that was Christmas and uh, Easter. And uh, so I was at a real young age, you know, and then uh, my mom passed away when I was about nine years old. And so that left me, my dad, and my two sisters at home because we stayed back in the Carolinas in the woods and stuff. And uh, as I grew up and stuff, my I had relatives that lived in town. They said, well, maybe you should give your life to Christ. You know, the reason I did it, because they want, they want me to do it, you know. And at that age, I didn't know nothing about Christ, giving my life to Christ and stuff. And so I said, okay, I'll do it and stuff. And so every once in a while, I would go to church. Preston on Christmas was a good time. And then <clears throat> the older I got, you know, I began to get into teenage years, and I forgot all, didn't think about going to church and stuff. You know, nobody made me go. My dad didn't make me go or nothing like that. And, uh, and I started hanging out with the fellows at school and stuff, started drinking and carrying on and hanging out in the club. And as, as I got older and older, I began to get worse and worse in drinking, got hanging out more, running in the ditch with my car and stuff. And I decided to get married at the age of 21. My first wife, she said, well, you need to give your life to Christ. I said, okay, we went to church, and this is one night, and we saw this picture about our left behind, you know, and they showed it. It got kind of scary, but, <laughs> you know, we're seeing this picture, this movie, and these people dying, they're going, to, they're going down the hill, and I didn't want to do that. So I said, okay, I give my life to Christ and stuff, and I had this warm feeling over it, but all of a sudden it stopped. But that didn't change me. Because after that, I went right back out there and did the same thing I was doing. Drinking, going to the club. I, you know, I was a drunk. I became a drunk. I was a 24-7 drunk. I turned 25. I said, well, I need to change my life. You know, I, I think I go in the military. And they got caught in the other thing, other sin that they did in the military, you know, porno and stuff like that, you know. And so as years went on, I continued as years went on. I couldn't drive because I lost my license in North Carolina for seven years. And so when I was driving the military in the Europe the last time in December 1983, I, I didn't want to drink no more because I did some bad thing happened to me. Well, that night I left the club and uh, I don't remember leaving the club getting to the barracks. And so they told me that I heard that a teenage girl got raped that night. And so they had me wondering, was I the one that raped this girl? I said, Lord, I hope I didn't rape nobody because I don't do things like that. And so it wasn't me. And then I began to hurt, start hurting my chest and stuff. And I told my, my captain that I want to go to the retreatment facility. When I got through the retreatment facility, the taste of alcohol was gone. It was gone. I didn't have no taste for alcohol. And so I came stateside and uh, I got a job that, uh, over here, me and my wife, and so I rededicated my life back to Christ. And that was the best thing I ever did. I started reading the Bible, and as I started reading the Bible, things began to change on the inside of me. I didn't know what it was. I still was, I still was a child in that. You know, I never felt that feeling before. And then I, later on, within about two years, I, you know, I got ordained as a deacon. And so I worked as a deacon for many years and stuff, you know, giving communion stuff, doing deacon work and stuff. And then at that church, I went to another church and I got in the lay pastor ministry. I did that for a while. And then I began to usher. And I began to, I sang in the choir. You know, I love to sing, you know, I sang in the choir and stuff. God changed my life miraculous and stuff. And since this day forward, I have never took another drink of alcohol because he delivered me. I still had another issue. And so I got invited to come to Hunger Generation. And when I got here, this was a very young church and stuff. And uh, my first New Year's service Eve here at Christmas I have here at the church, it was kind of crazy. You know, they brought a casket into the church, okay? I'm used to me, I'm used to seeing people, if you bring a casket in the church, they dead folks in there. And so I'm sitting back in the pew, I said, should I get up and leave or should I stay? And so I, I kept, I, we sat down and listened to Pastor Glad. And when Pastor Glad said, whatever you want to get rid of in the following year, I want you to write it on a piece of paper. And we wrote on a piece of paper and put it in the casket. And so after that, we pulled, we wheeled it out of the service, we wheeled it out and put it in the barrel, and we burned it. And I think in April, that year, 
that's when God took, took it away completely. I had no more urge for cigarette, and then I haven't smoked since so about 10 years, and I haven't drank alcohol in about 30 years. My name is Larry Smith, and that's in my testimony.